on. Hey, Harry, how you going, mate? Good, Jacob. How are you, mate? Yeah, pretty good, mate. Pretty good. Who we got yeah. on today, mate? Mate, another episode and we got another Olympian and boy, are we excited, aren't we? Mate, bloody oath, bloody oath. We've got the Australian discus thrower um, who re- represented Australia in the 2020 uh, Tokyo Olympic Games. The big man, he just missed out by the podium by about five centimetres, but my gosh, did he make us Aussies proud. Mate, he, uh, he bloody embodied the Australian spirit and made us all proud to call ourselves Australians. Here we are. So we've got uh, Matthew Denny. How are you, mate? Good, fellas. Thanks for having me on. How are you? Yeah, we're good. We're good. We're, good. we're uh, very excited for this. Um, when, when we messaged you on Instagram and you got back to us, we are like, gosh, he seems like a great bloke. And we're, yeah, we're keen out to have a bit of a chat with you. Oh, were you wrong? <laughs> <laughs> mate, if you, yeah, those TikToks and uh, whatnot have been blowing up all over my uh, For You page and I uh, can't wait to have a laugh. It's actually, it's funny. I, with the whole TikTok stuff, cause like I wasn't, I wasn't doing TikTok before I finished Olympics and that, ah, like before Olympics and whatever. But so I coached at one of the girls schools in Brizzy and I've gone to training first day back and they're like, Matt, you're all over my for you page. I'm like, oh, oh no. And then right. remembering the videos I did and I'm like, there's like 15 year old girls just like, this guy's an idiot. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, okay, I've got to deal with coaching this now. So <laughs> Oh. Nah, Jacob and I are massive fans of TikTok. So whenever we see yours pop up, we love it. <laughs> uh, glad, <laughs> glad. A bit better there at a little bit of a higher quality than the ones uh, I produce. <laughs> mine, oh. I think, <laughs> mine are uh, probably just shit talks. Not, 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 many, not many TikToks going on. Yeah, well, the main, I, think, the main I think mine were the same in the beginning, <laughs> that's for sure. The main difference is Jacob gets about 200 views. You get about 20,000 <laughs> or more. <laughs> <laughs> working my way out there, mate. I'm working. I'll get there one day. Uh, uh, one day, one day. I mean, I, I'm surprised I got there in the end. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, um, let's get into it, mate. Um, as we told you before, we have like these rapid fire questions that we do with all of our our guests. Um, so Jacob and I will just ask you one by one, and then you just try to answer as quickly as possible. The first thing that pops up into your mind. Wait, right, let's do it. All right, Jake. Do you want to ask the first question, mate? Ah, uh, yeah, mate. Okay, so. If you could eat one meal for the rest of your life, what would it be? Chicken pesto pasta. Uh, favorite movie or TV show? Um, Rick and Morty. <laughs> Who's your hero slash idol? Um, my my brother. The brother is it? Love that. Uh, do you have any nicknames? Uh, my brothers call me Jethro. Jethro. So from yeah, so from Beverly Hillbillies. Beverly. Yeah. Oh, oh, you never said it. Okay, yeah. So Beverly, so basically, <laughs> uh, it's like um, this big redneck that uh, used to wear like overalls and stuff. And because I was, I'm the youngest, but bigger than them. Um, they always used to call me Jethro because they thought I was dumb. So that's good. <laughs> <laughs> that's a pizza. Um, who's your celebrity crush besides us? Obviously. Ah, uh, celebrity crush, Chris Hemsworth. Oh. I love yeah, that. He's a hottie. Legend. Um, what is your go-to holiday destination? Go-to holiday destination uh, would be New Zealand. Ooh, nice. Uh, pineapple on pizza. Love it. Ooh. Are you a dog? Split the crowd there. <laughs> dog. 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 Dogs. Um, and then if you were going to dinner and you could invite uh, any three people in the world, who would they be? Um... My my fiance and Chris Hemsworth and Margot Robbie. Oh, bang, bang! Oh, That'd be bang. such a great Australian chat, I reckon. Yeah, That'd be great. yeah. <laughs> hey, you're fucking Aussie. I think you're Aussie, man. <laughs> <laughs> you'd swear. You'd think so. <laughs> Dude, I love that. Like, legit, Chris Hemsworth and Margot Robbie are my two biggest like celebrity crush so, but like they're so good at acting like they're actually yeah. so good the thing i love is just like about how all the other actors like talk about them like they're like oh yeah they're just such good people i'm like well that's just all australians really yeah. but it's like yeah all the americans treat them like they're unicorns of like the industry and stuff and it's just like them being australian it's crack up yeah, yeah. <laughs> i just love how the americans and like all the other na- like countries just froth like Frost, like froth Aussies. I can we just it's so it's it's so it. funny. Like when we so when I went over to Germany back in 20, 2017, so I had a mate studying um German over there and he was living over there for like four years and whatever. And he he took us out to 
um, like, you know, the mixed country um, bars that you can go to and basically you put on the country that you're from and then you go and like, it's just a big, like, big drink fest and um and yeah it, dude like everyone loves australians it's incredible <laughs> like they all like search out for the australians and then they'll all come drink with you and stuff because like obviously history of drinking yes. from the country and stuff yeah. it's so crazy like they they rate it so much yeah oh, I love that. I, and they obviously just love like the bogan accent anyway but it's yeah so good um <laughs> <laughs> no, that was great mate um great answers there um they're for the pineapple and pizza i'm not sure about that yeah yeah no we can fight about that later <laughs> Oh, no, I'm actually, I'll uh, take that back. Oh, you leave that one? All right, cool. Would you go, would you go, um, would yeah. you go pineapple on burgers? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like a like you go like going and grilled and stuff. Get like a Somerset burger. Yeah, nice. Yeah, they, I rate that. They're so just good. A, just a pineapple fan all together, mate. Yeah, I just love pineapple. Yeah, I just love. I reckon pineapple by itself is just elite. Like, it is. I mean, a whole a whole pineapple oak can definitely ruin your tongue for a couple of weeks. Yeah, that's true. That is true. Like razor yeah. blades. Yeah, like razor blades. <laughs> Licking <laughs> fur. Okay. All right. That's awesome, man. Um, yeah, nice. Uh, I guess going into the questions now, uh, firstly, how how are you feeling after uh, this big last month, I guess? Um, it's been kind of like pretty full on with, the first two weeks, obviously, with quarantine and that, even though it was quarantine and like, oh, you have downtime, like that whole two weeks, I was, you know, obviously my TikTok took off and then um, I was replying to a lot of messages. It was, I couldn't believe, I actually couldn't believe how many people just reached out and like said congrats. And mm-hmm. even people I grew up with that I hadn't talked to literally since I left school, reaching out and saying like messages, just trying to like sort through all of that and, and then the TikTok stuff took off and I was really, really enjoying it just because especially the more like quality ones that I did, like the, um, the expectations versus reality one with quarantine, the um, addicted to TikToks and the um, oh, the shaved face one. Um, I actually wrote scripts out for that. So like I, yeah. you know, just like really had to think about like how to make it decently funny and like mm-hmm. shoot it properly, edit it. And so like I really enjoyed that. That really killed some time for me. Um, mm-hmm. But then, yeah, obviously then I've just been out. I've been out for nearly a week now out of quarantine. So it's been not too bad. Obviously I had to move this weekend, which sucked, but um yeah, it's just kind of I'm coming back off. I'm coming down off the high now. Um, yeah. But it's it's kind of like it's been pretty brutal actually to be honest because because I still don't know how I feel about the fourth because like I'm happy with how I performed, but I'm mad with the fact that I knew I had more there. So it's like there's it's kind of eating at me at the moment. But yeah, so it's it's a big high, a lot of stuff going on, like just trying to like be level and stuff. But yeah, it's been it's been an interesting time. Yeah, yeah sure. well, like that. Um, it's a good way of sort of spending your quarantine time. Probably made it go a bit quicker than other people. Oh have. yeah, for sure, hundred percent. Um, and then like obviously like with the coming, you know, the fourth, which was tough. But like, how how was the whole Tokyo Olympic experience compared to like your Rio one? Um, it was definitely like I was in two different like parts of my career. Obviously, with Rio, I was um very young. Like I was the youngest in the field by like three or four years or something. Um, but yeah, like that was more about getting there. And I was I was also in good enough form where I should have made the final, but I just didn't perform well. And it was a big year where holding my peak was very difficult. Um, and then, yeah, and now we're in a position, like we came into this in a position where um, a lot of, like I was very dark horse when it came to um, a lot of the people that were looking at medals and you know, like how everything would play out. Um, but I knew I was in good form. Mm. And I know that, like, I've always backed myself performing well at majors and stuff. So, two, two totally different things um, in the in itself. Um, but like Tokyo was obviously different because there was so much less, so much more stress and focus on you know, not putting yourself in a bad position to get COVID or um, you know just like you know ruin it for yourself or ruin it for the team. So that was quite stressful. Um, and it was very, very pure, pure competition based with Tokyo, whereas Rio was like a little bit of that and experience kind of stuff, um, that, like yeah. the whole Olympic experience. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I was still like even with Rio, I was still there to compete. But um, yeah, this was 
a whole nother level. Yeah, mm. right. Is that because like the crowds sort of act, add that element of pressure to it? Um, to an to an extent, like more more the fact that like I think because of like because of COVID and everything was so strict, everything was shut down. We had no crowds. Um, it was kind of like, well, well, for me, I know that this wasn't for the case for some other people, but like for me, for example, it was more, I was like, okay, well, there's no point in wasting time going socializing with everyone and like putting yourself at risk with who knows has, who, who know, who knows who has COVID kind of thing. Um, and just be there to compete and then, you know, compete and go home. So I was just literally just focusing on comp whereas um yeah real is kind of like oh you know well you know we've got this we can go get these free stuff free haircuts maccas is there um you, know, you could like you, you had so many more th- like you had good parties even before and after competition like yeah. two different things you could do um but yeah there was just like a more experience whereas this was just like you compete you go home compare yeah okay yeah uh, so yeah so that was kind of the big difference yeah okay yeah i mean i guess it's it's tough fourth is such a tricky spot because like it's still very good you're still the fourth best in the world but then at the same time you're obviously striving to be the best version of yourself and you wanna that's the goal right to get get the first place or whatever it is get on the podium and i'm sure like i i'm sure you're bloody upset but at the same time it's all well pretty fucking proud of yeah it's it's a hard thing it's hard thing to be mad with because of like obviously i threw a pb in i was in um i like best result by an australian and you know all of these things um but and you know people sometimes hate me when i say this but like i'm not here to get fourth yeah at the end of the day like i'm here to win and i know that i think i think winning was potentially um just out of my ability at this point in time in my career, but I definitely knew that I I felt I had a 68, 68 and a half there. Um, yeah. And yeah, that's kind of what's killing me because I know like, I know when I'm in form and I know when what I can potentially throw. Yeah. Um, and I knew that I had that there and I missed that. So that's kind of like what's eating at me. But at the same time, like when it came to performing and like executing when it counted, I definitely found that like believe that I was the, better competitor out of everyone because i was so consistent and stuff but mm. yeah i mean consistency doesn't win it so yeah, <laughs> yeah. well like yeah. it's definitely the um it's the attitude of a competitor mate and um yeah it's tough but like yeah as we said before all of us were so proud of mm. the results that we saw came from you um thank you but sort of rewinding the clock a bit how, how did you get into discus in the first place how'd that all go down yeah, so that started with like basically I was just like a really athletic kid. So I did um, swimming, I did footy, I did or oh, motocross, athletics, like you know, just basically everything. Um, and what I basically did was I was more focused on athlete. Uh, sorry, I was basically oh my god, I can't speak today. <laughs> I was basically focused focused on footy, and then I wanted to play NRL because my, my my brother Jonathan did, and that was who I looked up to, and that's kind of the path I wanted to go. But then when I went to Tom Grandma and um, a couple other things changed, I didn't enjoy I didn't enjoy union at all, and I was kind of really not enjoying enjoying the whole team aspect because of the fact that. You know, I was a very competitive kid, and I hated not rely. I hated relying on other people to do the work as well, and them not doing that. <clears throat> so when you know, grade six and seven, I got dead last in the state in discus and shot. So I wasn't really at a great starting point. Yeah. Um, and then I kind of got sick. Of, I got. I didn't enjoy that, and I said, "All right, let's go get a coach." And I got very fortunate. I found a very, very good coach that got me to you know Rio um, and Com Games, and yeah, we kind of just cascaded from there but in grade 10 i think i decided after playing two games of union i was just like all right let's cut that i'm i'm not enjoying footy i don't want to play footy um i can feel i want to throw myself into that and it just went from there like i literally just i just went from you know championship to championship kept getting better kept breaking records just loved the sport yeah like everything that i had to offer so that was kind of how it all started really um yeah. Yeah, nice. Did you have that at that time? Did you know that like Olympics was going to be the goal? Like that was that was always your goal and mindset from the get-go or 
I, I, I have this weird thing, like, I don't know. I don't know if it's the competitiveness or like, um, but it doesn't matter like what I do. I just very, I just want to be like the best possible at it. Um, yeah. And obviously with track and fields, like Olympia, that was the goal. And I've like, as soon as I knew I wanted to focus on athletics, then I was like, okay, let's go win the Olympics kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, but that I had to break that down and sort of like, how's that look and what's yeah. realistic and whatever. And, you know, the first world, um, the first world team I ever made was world youth. Two years after I decided to, um, start doing athletics full time, just solely focusing on that. And then we won that and it was just like, okay, well, world youth, which is under 18s and go to juniors under 20s. Um, oh, what, what did I make next? I actually went from juniors and then, oh, world university games and then, olympics and, and world champs and just like and then repeat that process um yeah. with the majors and stuff so yeah it's more that i think um yeah. i was just like all right if we're doing this like we're gonna be the best at it kind of thing so mm. so i guess like in saying like the way you've sort of broken it down and you've gone like goal by goal in a way when you when you sort of started off training um like week to week to now like what sort of how does training look like now compared to what it was when you first started? Like how full on are you being with your training and stuff like that? Yeah. I think like when I, when I was younger, like my training was actually even more full on than what it is now. Um, because like my training still full on as it is, but, um, it just looks different the way that you focus when you get older and the way that you like basically select what you need to do, picking your points in training and like being very selective in, um, your development and what you actually need to get better because you get to a certain point where it's like okay well i've i've ex like i've reached my resources with that let's start some new stuff or like try different things so um yeah and like that whole goal thing if you just sit there and go i want to win the olympics you it's like impossible to fathom i think like in yeah. the complexity of how much development it takes the time how much dedication you need to put into it, how much you have to like not do to be able to get to that point. So and at the same time, you also have to be very genetically gifted. You have to be all that kind of stuff. So it had to be broken down. Yeah. Um, but like the training now, like training I do now, so I've two sessions a day um, and that's usually five five days of the week. Um, now, because I'm older, I don't do Saturday sessions. Thank God. <laughs> Loving it. Um, and then, yeah, it just, it's a, it's a um, balance between um, throwing, weightlifting, gymnastics, um, what else? Uh, yeah, like, so they're like my main sessions um, and then like athletic development. So like sprinting, sprinting and jumping and then like med ball work and like, um, mm specific training systems and stuff like that. Um, so that's all over the period of the week. And then you add in like three, three to four, um, treatment sessions out of the week and stuff like that. So yeah, it's, it's pretty, it's full time. Like, you know, I leave, I leave in the morning at like normal work day, like eight o'clock. Um, and then I'm not back until five thirty, six o'clock at least. Um, yeah. by the time I've actually finished the day. So it's, it is full time. It's full time yeah. work. Um, it just looks, way different and i love it so yeah gosh it sound um it's like it's cool how you're saying like you so many sports sort of intertwine with discus because like i guess like we don't know too much about the sport like obviously we love watching yeah. stuff but i didn't realize how many different um sports that you can do that can actually help you with your performance yeah it's pretty um that's i think probably one of the biggest things i like about it is that you know, to be a very good um, discus thrower and thrower in general, like jab, disc, shot, hammer, you you have to be very, very good at multiple things. You have to be like, you have to be a whole athlete because if you if you don't have flexibility and, um, you know, coordination and um, explosiveness and stuff, um, you just don't have, you don't, won't have the ability to perform the actions correctly mm. um so and then like weightlifting right like i'm not even one of the strongest discus throwers um but like some of the guys that are the stronger boys in disc at the moment even like whether they're throwing far or not you know i challenge it would be like beating some of our top olympic weightlifters um in australia kind of thing um 
and like you know they're very very strong people just in general and then yeah just good balance and you know very explosive through sprints and like jumps standing long stuff like that like you just have to be a whole athlete which is um yeah like i feel like when i watch sprints and stuff like obviously or sprints and jumps and all that like i'm not saying they're less than i'm just saying that I feel like disc is uh, throws one of those sports where you, you literally have to do so many things to be just good at it. Mm. Can't yeah. just you can't just do the event and be good at it. Like yeah, yeah. no, I'm great brutal, answer, so. great answer, yeah, for sure. Um, so like me and me and Harry are pretty interested in uh, nutrition and like especially in nutrition of athletes. So like considering like you're a pretty fucking big boy. I assume you need a lot of power in your throw. How do you go about attacking your diet? Like, um, well, so just a heads up, my diet's terrible at the moment, so we won't <laughs> talk about that. But uh, when I'm when I'm in like when I'm in strict training and stuff, like it's it's very specific. Like I don't, um I don't personally count my calories. My dietitian does. Um, so like I feed her information on what she needs. Um, and like what the focuses are with training. So. Um, you know, it's just like, for me, it's standard three meals, two snacks a day, plus like a, um, uh, sometimes a protein shake after training, just depending on my nutrition times when I'm eating, What's going when on? training is kind of thing. Cause if I don't, you know, if I like, you know, I'm always, I've always been like very worried as an athlete about like putting myself in a position where like, I'm worried about supplements, um. Yeah. Like there's, you know, you see all these people that miss test because of, because of just dodgy subs that are actually legal. Um, I've always been worried about that, even though I've got HASTA approved, I've always got this and that. So like, I try and always make sure that I don't need that unless it's a last resort. Um, if I like, if I'm not organized or, you know, all that kind of stuff. So yeah, I just have a normal diet. Um, yeah. obviously have, like I have my upper levels of, um, of protein and carb intake because of my size. Um, but it's just, yeah, it's just standard ABCs, just making sure I'm always fueled and just yeah. adjusting, you know, percentage wise when it comes to what we're doing. So like my percentages will go up intake wise when we're leading into this next phase because of we're gonna go, it's about, I think it might be a month and a half, two months of probably actually more um, of hypertrophy work just cause it's like going to be general prep. So we're going to put on hopefully around three muscle, three kilos of muscle mass. Um, and then from there, then we'll just strip back body fat wise um, mm. and be more athletic. I'm pretty fat at the moment, which is great. Um, Try to fit into that jumpsuit of yours. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, I, I definitely would be wearing that anytime soon. I'll say that. <laughs> um, pretty sure I had like 1.2 kilos of Nutella in quarantine. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, no, nah, when I want to eat, I can, but like everyone's like, oh, you must eat so much. And it's, I don't actually, I, yeah, right. if I'm, if I'm not training, I'm just like, yeah, blah whatever mm, yeah, um, but but when i'm in training like i'm very strict on it um mm. like like yeah right yeah yeah it's keeping it nice and simple mate i love that yeah simple um, stuff rewinding the clock back again so we're going yeah. back and forth um so nah, you, grew up, you grew up in the countryside of queensland right in the country yep. Yeah. Yep. um so obviously like what what values did you learn like growing up in the country and like what did you take some of those values into where you are now and where you're competing and stuff like that? Um, I think like for me, I feel that's um, like, it's depends on how you want to answer it. Um, yeah. Because like, I know that people say to me about certain values that I show um, or like attitude and stuff like that, that I show that they notice that I like that I'm from country town and like, I bring those certain things mm. um, personally though. Like I think that, um, and this is also, this is from coming from country town, but also like just developing as a person mm. is, um, probably one of the biggest things I work with is perspective, um, and like understanding stuff and, um, and always, um, trying to understand different situations and learning a lot and making sure that like, I'm always well informed, no matter whether it's for training or just in general, um, mm. And then just just like work ethic, I think. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, yeah. No. Like, don't sit there and complain about not getting better if you're not like dedicating, like always, like dedicating yourself to finding what's the best way, how to get better. 
mm. that kind of thing. So, yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, good answer. That's a good mate. question, though. Yeah. It's a bit of a deep question, but um, yeah, I really like, really rate that because um, yeah, Jacob and I are always um, looking for ways to self improve and stuff like that. But yeah, that's a great um, great way to put it. So, good inside. I think good I think the other thing to like elaborate on that is like because I come from like so Alla is a very small community. It's only like it's less than a thousand people, um, but they've always been very good. They've always supported me in like everything that I've done. And because I'm the only Olympian that's ever come from Alara, it's really nice to be a part of because no matter when I go back, no one knows me as, no one treats me as Maddie Denny, the Olympian. They just treat me as Maddie Denny, the kid who grew up here kind of thing. So um, I think that as well helps with just like grounding and humbling and yeah, just like stuff like that. Like yeah. it, it, it's just kind of like, no idiot policy and um, that kind of stuff. And it's really, Don't I've brought that like sense of community stuff into trying to bring more and more of that into like the sport and also just the people I work with and like how that we structure all of like, cause I, you know, yeah, I'm an athlete, but I also have like 11 to 12 plus people professionally helping me as an athlete. Yeah. So it's like creating that environment as well. Just creating mm. like a good culture. Yeah. hundred yeah. percent. Mm. Nice, yeah. man. Love that. That's good. Um, so a little silly one for you. If you didn't I mean, complete in uh, compete in discus, what other sport would you want to compete in? Golf. Oh, golf. are you a little? Are you uh, are you uh, hitting the links much, much often or? Um. Yeah. So I do a lot of long drive stuff. Um. But like uh, before, I was doing long drive. I was like like playing consistent on the links kind of thing. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I need to get back into it though because like I don't know if you guys knew but so I had a big injury back in October which was caused for my long drive stuff and a couple other things um and so that kind of stuffed me up for like four yeah. months um so everyone's like yeah Matt don't pick up a club until at least after Tokyo all right <laughs> ah, fuck fine uh, so that's interesting yeah. that's interesting long drive yeah. um yeah. is how do you compare how do you go about that how do you compete do you compete? So, so, so there's like a long drive association in Australia that's partnered with um, the main one in um, America. So you know how they used to do like long drive comps? It was like ESPN and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah. So they separated from ESPN because they didn't want to continue. Um, so now it's like L, um, LPDA or something. Mm-hmm. And Australia's got a branch here now. So like that's our comps and whatever. Yeah. Um, but the way they go about it, like I have a coach um, and – my actual athletics coach is also very, very good at long drive. So like that's something we do together aside from athletics and yeah, nice. Um, yeah. So it's, it's good fun. Yeah, how far are you have bombing fun. them? <laughs> um, best comp shot is 392. Ah, oh, sorry. 389 meters, but <laughs> best, yeah, what? the best, best training shots 420. So. Oh my oh. God. Holy yeah. shit. <laughs> so I got like, I got like proper clubs and stuff. Like it's a four degree, ah, uh, five degree turned down to a three degree head and then it's like a 48 inch shaft with yeah, like a flexi medium f- yeah with a flex shaft so it's like a medium flex shaft so it's good because mm. well, yeah. jacob and i we love our golf um yeah. so that, that's so cool long drive if there was but, like a if there was a, if, if there was a competition of like slice drive i'd probably win <laughs> yeah you reckon yeah good nice i yeah. slice the shit out of my drives like no tomorrow we were playing, yeah, yeah. 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 We were playing down the coast once and <laughs> Harry's absolutely sliced the ball three fairways across. I don't, oh, he, no. He's put four onto the fourth fairway. Like, it legit went on a road. That's how far. Oh, That's yeah. the worst part, like, especially, like, now that I'm hitting quite far is, like, as soon as you're, like, a mill off, like, any degree off, it's just so far right or so far left. Like, it's, like... <laughs> Just tee up again. Don't even bother going looking for it. Oh, like, nah, yeah. cool. well, the worst. I'm, I'm, de- I'm definitely uh, <laughs> quite often, more often than not, uh, a lot more, few, a few more millimeters off than. Um, yeah, no, that's really all right. Like. That's okay. That's all right. We all learn. Uh, <laughs> that's funny. Too, oh, that's great, mate. Yeah, well, we'd love to see it. Um, um, represent Australia for the Olympics in golf, mate. That'd be sick as well. Or long drive. That would be fun. Comes in. Yeah. That would be fun. Yeah. Maybe Brizzy. Sure. Maybe Brizzy just brings in. Maybe long, Brizzy. Yeah. Bring in long drive for the Olympics. <laughs> just do it anyway. Just rock up to the course yeah. and just set up a long drive setup. It'd be good. <laughs> hey guys, sorry, don't mind me. <laughs> Happy Gilmore coming through. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, mate, that's funny. awesome. Um. Well, besides obviously your yeah, um yeah full-time job as a discus thrower do you have any other like hobbies or you know studies at all that you've been doing or 
Yeah, so I'm nearly finished my Bachelor of Business. Um, so I'm doing two majors in that. And then um, I'm also doing, like I'm, I do photography part-time and um, and a few other different things here and there. Um, but yeah, mainly, and coaching as well. I do a lot of coaching. Um, but I think with, um, with just the way that like the Olympics are gone and um, presence that's grown, like with my brand and stuff, I'll do a lot of more. I'll probably put a lot more focus into my like podcast stuff and um TikTok. and a lot of th- yeah a lot of things around that um yeah like content um yeah get your name out so yeah I think I'll be doing a lot more of that over the next like well, six months to like however long but yeah yeah well mate if you ever want a huge special guest on your podcast mate just hit us up and we'll love to I'll be let you know I'll <laughs> let you know I'll get you in for a couple of segments for sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the big 400 followers. Fuck this. <laughs> um, yeah, that sort of wraps up all the, the questions that we got for you, mate. That was awesome. Um, you got yeah. really in depth there and a few deep questions. We love it. Um, and now we sort of move on to our sort of segments <clears throat> we love doing. Um, and Jacob's got uh, his segment that he called uh, Wally's Wacky Thoughts. So it's basically a conspiracy theory that he finds and uh, he tells us about it and we have to sort of react to it um uh, let's go I love, let con- that- I love a good conspiracy don't worry yeah. <laughs> um jacob's conspiracy theories are either like full-on really good or just complete utter shit so <laughs> there's no in between yeah uh, hopefully it's just not an anti-vax one that's let's hope <laughs> i tend to stay away from that stuff you yeah know. <laughs> stay pc <laughs> uh, all right jacob yeah here we go so bear with me here um so the theory, right, is that humans used to live on Mars, okay? So before Earth, we lived on Mars um, because Mars has shown that it's got water, other, other resources, and it's been confirmed that, like, humans can live on it. Um, and then also to add on to that, Mars has slowly been fading from red. Um, so many people say that, like, there was a nuclear winter that happened like thousands of years ago and pretty much a nuclear winter is or happens when like a planet is destroyed by a nuclear bomb and the smoke covers the planet, turning it like temporarily red and it fades over time. So that's what's going on now. So many think that like thousands of years ago, we used all of Mars, like their resources, we nuked it and we've come to earth. And now we're planning to do the same with earth. We're planning to go back to Mars. And that would make sense with like why all the billionaires and NASA's and whatnot are trying to go to Mars. Holy shit. I, I, I actually have heard that one. I back that though. I reckon that I wouldn't be surprised because have yeah. you seen all the stuff around um, the, sorry to like add to the conspiracy. Have you seen the one around the um, pyramids and the way that they're structured and is like perfectly on um, yeah. certain axes and stuff. And I was just like, like Hmm, what? Bro, so, so I did, I had a legit did that one like a couple of episodes ago and like, it's crazy how like with the pyramids, they all like, I like the dimensions of like, like the, the speed of light or some shit like that. Like, yeah. So like all the calculations work out to like a few sp- specific things that relate to them. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I, I've all, all also always been um, like not curious, uh, yeah, curious, but also like um, question about how they're like, oh yeah, you know, like they just built the pyramids, like they just had <laughs> slaves and stuff. I'm like, yo, I there's some big blocks, dude. Like, <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know, bro. They're not. They're not <laughs> I don't know. On their back, like, like yeah. Oh, they're not doing that. There's no. Well, chance. especially but- with how small people were back then. Oh yeah, true. And like, like wasn't the wasn't like the average height like five five or something mm. five four yeah, no yeah, not, right. not even that less than that like five five one or something you're, like, you're asking not... the wrong blokes mate we would have no idea about that <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah I mean who knows maybe we're trying to go back to Mars anyway like yeah I back that I back that hundred percent well, for sure yeah. yeah to be honest Jacob when you when you first said that we used to live on Mars I was like fuck this is gonna be shit but you've actually um backed it with some all right evidence so good job mate yeah thanks mate I appreciate uh, that. solid. <laughs> Oh, love that. But I think Maddie did a de- uh, better job at explaining the pyramids than you. You were just like, oh, yeah, fucking dimensions and shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's not wrong. Maddie definitely explained it with more scientific terms than you did. 
pretty much every time someone comes on here, they just fucking out, they just outperform me in every aspect. You just, you just say, oh, you just say with confidence, anyone will believe anything. Yeah, that's it. Oh. Yeah. Well, when uh. we um when we interviewed um the beach volleyballers last week, um, yeah, no, our family quite Jacob literally couldn't speak in front of them. It was just so embarrassing. And then oh, like, really? <laughs> yeah, I was a bit, I was fucking nervous, fucking. And then, Dude, and then, they're and so then, funny. They're yeah. so cool. They're fucking they was, awesome. They were saying, they're good yeah, chicks. Well, they were saying, yeah, I hope uh, speaking doesn't come to the Olympics because Jacob wouldn't be representing Australia for us. <laughs> <laughs> I was, yeah, because like, apparently the uh, like spelling in liquid charge used to be in the Olympics like ages ago. So, oh, like, really? I, I hope that I, de- I definitely wouldn't have gone to that. I'll tell you that. <laughs> 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 no, that's good. No, yeah. they're good chicks. Yeah, because well, like I train with them at QIS all the times, so and they're mm. they're they're good chats. Oh, they're so cool. Yeah, we were because uh, they yeah they were our first sort of Olympians we had on. We were absolutely shitting it, and similar with you, I guess. We're like, we got Olympians on our potty, but <laughs> you guys are so cool. <laughs> no, that's good. The TikTok star actually is not the TikTok yet. star. Yeah, yeah. Brandon Stark's roommate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, it's an accelerator. <laughs> so that, that's that's Wild's wacky thoughts for you, mate. We got um, this is probably the, our favorite one that we love doing is our dad jokes. Oh, nice! Right. There are so many good ones out there. Um, and we, we we try to say it say it to each other with, and try to keep a straight face or try not to laugh. But we're, we're yeah. Jake and I are pretty bad at not uh, laughing. Just, just speaking <laughs> up, fucking laugh, pretty much. Yeah. Um, <laughs> bad. So Jake, if you want to go first with yours, mate, and we'll try to. Keep a straight face, as much of a straight face. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm so smart. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, to the man in the wheelchair that stole my camouflage jacket, you can hide, but you can't run. <laughs> <laughs> that was actually not too bad. <laughs> Oh my! That's so clever. That's such a <laughs> clever joke for a dad joke. That's like premium quality. That's like yeah, that's, that's like, premium. That's a dad you want to be friends with right there. That's a bit, great dad. Bit, bit uh, harsh, but also pretty funny. Oh jeez. <laughs> Uh, right, well, we don't know if we'll be saying jokes like that in when we get a couple more subscribers, but for now, I think yeah, maybe not. Who knows? Oh, all right. Well, um, I don't think I'll be able to back that one up as well. Mine's <laughs> real shit, but here we go. All right, all right. Um, do you want to hear um a joke about construction? I'm yep. still working on it. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard that one. Oh. I've heard no. that one before. I've heard that, that is one before. so bad. Oh my god. <laughs> god. Have, have you have you got one, Maddie? I haven't got one. I've got I've got a couple, but I'm not gonna say them because I <laughs> I just can't. Um but I actually have yeah, I have no cl- like decent ones that I can say out loud. Um yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, that will, that will I don't wanna one. follow I don't wanna follow Jacob's though. That was ripper. Yeah. That was quality. <laughs> Thanks, mate. I appreciate it. That was quality. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll keep we'll keep yours one for maybe off air, mate. Yeah, yeah, we'll leave that one, yeah. <laughs> maybe when you're down in Canberra or we're up in Boozy, um we have a beer, you can probably tell us, eh? Yeah, hundred percent for sure. <laughs> I do have one more. Oh, what? come on then. Why not? Should I oh. should I should I do one more? Should I try to beat my other one or? Oh, yeah. I mean, they'll probably be shit, but go for it. Okay. <laughs> right. This is a good one. All right, ready? <laughs> what do our sprinters eat before a race? Nothing. They fast. Oh no. <laughs> I've gotten worse. Oh, it's <laughs> so bad. Is that worse or is that better? Uh, I reckon that was better than the construction one. Oh, okay. I reckon good. that was better than the construction one for sure. Oh, oh no. <laughs> oh, God, oh, that's good. No, nah, rate it. Rate it. Good nah, quality. We'll, we'll Jacob, Back it up Jacob with confidence. Wins. all you need. Yeah. <laughs> Jacob wins this one. I'll give it to Jack. Oh, take that one. I'll take that one. That's that's a hard joke to beat. I'll say that. <laughs> uh, well, that that uh that sort of wraps up our whole episode, mate. Um, just a, yeah, massive thank you for uh, coming on. You didn't you didn't even have to take time out of your day to come and 
listen to two or you know answer two shit blokes questions um <laughs> but no, yeah i loved that, it it was good we um we really appreciate you coming on and as we said before um we're super proud of uh what you did at the olympics and i'm sure you know all of australia are um jacob do you want to add anything onto that mate um no you've uh pretty, yeah you've nailed it uh, you've nailed it mate there's not much more to say um keep making your shit talks um keep eating nutella don't change because we fucking love it um but yeah no i really appreciate it appreciate it. it's been awesome chatting to you just picking your bro- uh, brain for a little bit you gave some awesome insight so i hope the uh listeners appreciate it and if i can get around it because yeah you're a ripper bloke mate no i appreciate it fellas thanks for having me on it's good good having normal chats and not yeah. too scripted it's good fucking nice fucking nice i'm um, good is there, is there any, um, we always ask this with all our guests as well, is there anyone that you want to shout out anything to? Because most likely they probably will hear it because so many people listen to us. <laughs> no, I, I don't, I, yeah, I don't really have any shout outs, unfortunately, no. Uh, but no, I appreciate you guys having me on today. And um, yeah, just good to have fun chats and not be too serious about things. It's good. Yeah, that's good, man. That's, that's what glad. we aim for, mate. Because, you know, as serious as the world can get sometimes, we just want to step back and have a laugh, hey? Yeah, 100%. Nice. All right, mate. Right Thanks on. for coming on. Uh, all the best. Thanks, Thank you. Cheers, mate. Thank you.